Investors, Ryan Williams on with us, joining us for a nice chat today. And I just wanted to invite him on to talk all about general investing and winding down 2024. Ryan, I got to ask you, man, and just I want to jump into this conversation. What's been up on your end? It's been a hot moment since we jumped on together. Catch me up to speed. Yeah, man, it has been. Let's see. How long has it been? I mean, we, you know, we talk quite a bit off camera, but I think it's been a year at least a year since i've been here on your channel it's been gosh dude i think probably a couple of years since you've been on mine i think the last time you were on my channel was when like right after i moved to las vegas which would have been like just just over two years ago so all that to say this is long overdue i'm stoked to be here um and you know man it's just been same old same old for me it's actually been a really stinking good year in the portfolio 2024 has been it's been wonderful um how about for Dude, yourself you are almost at a hundred thousand dollars i gotta say that right off the bat uh, we're getting You're right there, around dude. the corner we're getting there. 2025 um, is your year oh it'll it'll 100 percent happen in 2025 <laughs> i could honestly i could i could be there tomorrow if if i wanted to i've got the cash but it, it would not be irresponsible i need to i need to just just and have some rainy day money, have some emergency funds, but it's it's teasing me, man. But yeah, we'll we'll one hundred percent get there in twenty twenty five, no doubt about it. Um, but I have no complaints, my friend. It's been a really good year of financial growth, uh, mental growth as well, channel growth. That's been fantastic. But man, everything's just been going so good. I feel so fortunate. No complaints whatsoever. But what about you, man? Where's so where's your where is your portfolio at right now? What's the value? As of today, yeah. I am sitting on just north of 225000 in the brokerage. I have been, th this is, I mean, talk about just throwing money into the market week in and week out. That is what I've been doing all 2024. Because I was like, I can sit on this. And don't get me wrong, I still have emergency savings. Like, I'm not going, you know, nutty professor and throwing everything in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I still have the emergency savings. But I just decided... I don't know at what point. I think it was very early on in 2024. I was like, why am I playing so safely? And I was like, I just, I want to just go all, I want to go all in. I want to throw a lot of money into the market. Just see what happens. And as you know, as a dividend investor, it's not like we're going after like risky, you know, Bitcoin or, you know, I don't know, whatever yeah, volatile what you stocks. So sure. I'm like... Okay, I throw I throw my money, more money into the market. Is it is it gonna tank or is it gonna stay? Am I gonna get paid more dividends? And then somewhere on that journey, I really don't know. I was like midway through twenty twenty four. I was my you know, I, I just got a puppy and I'm sitting in the dog park and I'm like, you know, you talk a lot about dividend growth. Why why is your portfolio not like super oriented towards dividend growth? And then I took another major switch and I just started like doing moves like selling off J&J &J entirely. Booting J&J, &J, the stock everybody knows me for and going into United Health now. And I feel really good about these moves and I see in my portfolio kind of the results from that and I just, 2025 is gonna be big. That's all I know. I'm gonna go like, I, th I thought I went all in in 2024, but I think 2025 is the year. That's great, man. It it really is, uh, you know, investing in general, it really is one of those things that just gets better with time. Um, and so I have no doubts that next year will be better than this one. I am curious though, because I'm curious to know what, like, what was the impetus that first made you think, man, I got I I need to get out of Johnson & Johnson. Once you start having those thoughts, it's like, it's, you you can't escape it. Like you'll be, it'll be in the back of your mind until you take care of it. So what was the, the first thing, what was the thing that first made you think that one's got to go? Was it, and I know you talk these days, you talk to, to so many people. Did that have so many different people with so many viewpoints? Did that, has that shifted your thinking at all at, at, in how you approach your portfolio? And is, is, is that kind of what led you to this big change, I suppose? It's such a good question. Uh, Very long-winded question, so I'm sorry. 
No, no. I, I mean, it, it was necessary. I spoke like so strongly about J and J, and I was. And I know, so I know it's you. You have an emotional bond with that company too, so I know yes. that one was especially difficult to let go of. For anyone who doesn't know, my father was a J and J executive for some time, and so I was like, I just grew up on J and J. Like that. That was the that was the deal, the shtick, and. I, I, you know, I mean, as a dividend investor, it's a dividend gem. Like, that's a treasure chest for dividend investors. And so I just, mm. you know, over time, it was like the goal was to get to 100 shares plus of J&J &J and build this great position, and it's going to be an unbreakable dividend stock. And it is. It still is. I don't hate on J&J. &J. It's a phenomenal company. But, you know, it's funny you mentioned even just talking to, like, a lot of people. I think in talking to a lot of people, I was hearing myself talk and I talk a lot about, like I said, dividend growth and the importance of knowing yourself as an investor and the importance of knowing your timeline. Like how many, how many years do you have left to go until retirement, Ryan? <laughs> Too many. <laughs> right. Well, you know so, what the, the serious answer, Ari, is I don't, I, I honestly don't know. I, it depends on so many different things. And I'm not going to make this, a, I'm not going to ramble on this, but part of me already feels retired, just being able to do this YouTube stuff and, and the newsletter and all the, the investing gibberish that goes on. Um, Just being able to do that for a job, it, it kind of feels, and you might already get this as well, it, it kind of feels like, being retired in a sense it's a lot of hard work but um you know just not having a, a nine to five and being able to do this it feels kind of like being retired which at least for me i think has taken taken some of the the pressure off of um getting to live off dividends as fast as possible um and so i don't know exactly i don't know exactly when i'll start pulling my dividends i I've kind of told myself maybe once I get to the point where I'm bringing in like 2K a month on average, maybe I'll start pulling some of it to pay the bills and, you know, reinvest the rest of it, kind of start slowly transitioning into that. But I'm in no rush, my friend. I am loving life. I'm enjoying every day. Every single day is is structured the way that I want it to be. I get to do the things I enjoy, talk to the the people that I enjoy talking to, and I could not ask for, for anything more. And so... And I think that's kind of what retirement is all about. And so I don't I know. Say, that's like the perfect pitch for retire with Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> investors. Or, or to start a YouTube channel. You know, you can attest to this. You never know. Or, or Twitter or a newsletter or Instagram, whatever. You can attest to this. Like you never know what those things can grow into. And you never know just what it can do for your life. It could be completely life-changing. And it's 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 now easier than ever to forge your own path and everyone has an opportunity to do something like this and everyone has a voice and a story to tell. Um, and so I think everyone should give it a shot if they've ever had an interest in, in trying it out. So uh, I'm very passionate about that. And I said I wasn't going to go on a tangent with this, but there we go. <laughs> I feel like we're, we're going to go down there eventually. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. But look, yeah, it, it was that question, right? I had the same answer just about. Yeah. I can't tell you when, first of all, I also, just like you shared, like being on YouTube, I'm having a lot of fun. That's all I know. And that's all that matters. And I never really had like, I'm not the type of guy who's going to quote unquote retire to go sit on the beach, right? It's like, I know I'm going to keep doing things and keep having fun and keep learning and keep growing. I think that's the essence of life. And so when I thought about that, I'm like, well, then that means that you have decades at least to go. And so why are you playing it so safe? And you keep telling people that if you're a younger investor, be growth oriented. And then you keep going on masters of the market and these guests keep talking about that same idea. And I said, when I had that hard look at myself in the mirror, I said, is your portfolio the investor that you say you are? Mm. And I go, ooh, no. Like it wasn't a complete no, but like, I'm 30 decades to go and, and I'm in cahoots with J and J, you know, like, <laughs> like am I in bed with J and J? No, like I could be in bed with United health. We're going to grow that dividend 
according to Simply Safe Dividends, right? In terms of an average year over year dividend growth rate. And I'm like, that sounds nice, right? Like that sounds really nice over the span of time and capitalize on that. And then and then also like a play like Visa, like these are stocks I just think people overlook because the dividend yield isn't really that attractive at a low, you know, Visa's under one percent. United Health at one point four, one point five percent, not super sexy. Mm-hmm. But for me, that those are super sexy plays today, you know, and like according to my investor profile and how I think about it. So it was a no brainer and I just started like strategically selling off positions. And I think the other thing, Ryan, I, I spoke a lot about even way back when, I, I added too many positions in twenty twenty. And then it was like, what am I doing with those? Like, I don't, I don't want them in the portfolios, you know? So I, I just started doing a lot of cleaning and a lot of like looking in the mirror. I need to create the portfolio for investors out there to then look at mine and say, oh, he's preaching this and his portfolio is this. Yeah, that makes sense. You want to 100% put your money where your mouth is pretty much. Yeah. Hmm. That's probably actually the best, the most like literal use of that phrase right there. Literally. Put your dividends yeah. where your mouth is. You know? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but no, that's you touched you on this, a good man. Go, go ahead. I, I want to I ask you, your portfolio, with, with this kind of how I framed it now, what, do you think you should go more growth right now in terms of dividends? Or are you satisfied with your portfolio? You know, I'm tw- I go back and forth. Ultimately, I think I'm satisfied. And here's why. I, 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 I know exactly where you're coming from. And I would say that I... I mean, we're, we pretty much have the same investor profile, and I, I want to, I want to talk more about that mo- in a in a moment because I really, I've heard you talk more about that, the investor profile, and I think it's super important. So I'd like to circle back to that. But yeah, I there's times where I think that it probably would make sense to cut out some of those stalwarts like the Johnson and Johnsons, or the Procter and Gambles, um, ones like that. I think these days, honestly, man, those are kind of like the only two stalwarts that I that I have. And and just kind of as a sidebar, I characterize dividend stocks basically into three different categories, right? On one end of the spectrum, you've got the high yield investments, which are characterized by, you know, high starting yield, low dividend growth. We can come up with some names. That's going to be the realty income, the Main Street Capital Corporations, the Al- the Altrias. Um also although, although Altria's growth rate is more moderate than low, I'd say. On the other end of that spectrum, you have the visas of the world, which have the low starting yields, but in the UNHs and the killer dividend growth rates. Okay. So that's kind of the, the two ends of the spectrum, but then you've got everything in between. And that's where I would throw these stalwarts, the Johnson and Johnson's, the Procter and Gamble's, these ones that, you know, don't have the highest starting yield, maybe, you know, mid 2% to mid 3% and not the highest, but not the lowest dividend growth rates as well, mid single digits. So those are kind of in the middle there. And in my portfolio, when I look across all of my holdings, I have a, a pretty solid balance between all of those. Um, I, you know, I've got some high yields. I've got some dividend growth stocks. I've got some of those stalwarts. And for me personally, it, I, I guess I consider it kind of like an all-weather type of dividend investing strategy. I'm getting the best of all worlds. And for me, I really like that. I really like having that balance. Um and I think that it helps, I, I'm hoping that it will help deliver consistent returns across various market environments. Um, and, you know, I've only been investing, I'm coming up on five years now, so I, I probably really haven't seen the full, both sides of, of the economic environments, but I've had a, ta- a little taste of it so far. You know, 2021 was a killer year, saw some really, really big gains when the market was going up, 2022 was a terrible year. I don't know how much the S&P dropped, but it was it was down seven, eight, maybe even more percentage points, double digits that year. My portfolio was break even in 2022. And I attribute a lot of that to having those sleep well at night companies. That Back then I had more of them. I had Coca-Cola and Proc, well, Procter and & Gamble and uh, Johnson & Johnson. So I had a couple more of them than I do now, but I still attribute a lot of that um, 
you know, that defensiveness to those defensive positions. And I like, I like that. I, 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 I think if my portfolio is a football team, I'm going to just tie it up with this analogy. If my for- portfolio is a football team, I've got some great offensive players and I'm not a sports guy, by the way, I've got some great offensive players. I've got some great defensive players and I'm hoping that, um, you know, that will continue to carry me to the Super Bowl. It's worked out really well so far. And, um, and I'm happy with it. I like having that balance. Now, with that said, moving forward, as I've, as I continue to learn more about this stuff and also have just more experience in the market, I'm, I'm starting to develop a better sense of what my investor profile is and what type of companies that I am naturally drawn to. And that's leading me to companies that are more on the growthy side, just naturally. I'm not trying to do that. It's just those are the ones that seem to jump out at me these days. I don't get as excited about like a UPS today as I might have <laughs> a couple years ago. It's a fine company, but it's like it just doesn't it doesn't jump out to me. You know, there's nothing about this company that really it's just kind of eh, you know. And I, I I have a lot of positions already. I don't I don't need to add any more eh to my portfolio. If I'm going to add any more positions, they they've got to be special. And so these days, the ones that I'm drawn to are, are are kind of more akin to the direction that you're going down. And these companies, just looking holistically, like I understand them, that's the most important thing, but I'm looking at the financials. It's like, I get stoked when I see their sales going up double digit percentages, their earnings per share, the free cash flow. I get so excited to see a company with that plus no debt. Okay, those to me are the makings of a great dividend growth stock. And when I see something like that, I actually just found out about a new one the other day. Someone in the live stream shared, um, I don't remember the ticker symbol and you might, I'm sure you know this company, it's Evolution. They're basically Evolution AB, that's the name of the company, but basically they make um, like slot machines, okay? And, oh my God, dude, I thought Visa. I feel like this is something only someone in Vegas or Nevada would be like, that's true. this this hot stock. That's true. No, (laughs) that's true. That's totally true. Um, right up my alley in that regard, but dude, you, I, I looked at the financials. I think that was the first time in my life I was, I was speechless, um, pure class up and down the board, the, the revenue earnings, free cash flow off the charts. It basically was like an exact replica of Visa's financials. And those don't come around all too often. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that those are the type of companies I'm now leaning more into. Not because I'm being forced into it or because I I think, oh, I'm 30, I need more growth. It's just like, those are the ones that are, are now jumping out to me. I think, and this, this ties back to me ultimately agreeing with you, I think long-term, those are gonna be the ones that will deliver the best total returns. Uh, I still want to see a dividend. That's that's important to me. But I think my definition of dividend investing has has changed a bit over time, as I think it should. I think when when and I I'm I don't want to speak for you, but I think you were probably the same way getting into this. You know, when you first get into investing and in, in dividend investing, you're you're looking at the yields, and that's going to leave you to lead you to invest in the AT and T's and the Verizons and nothing against those companies necessarily, but. Those aren't those aren't the right ones for for this type of investor profile. You shouldn't build your entire portfolio around around those. Um, and I'm probably digging myself, talking myself into a hole saying this, you know, because I, I do say, have still have some next, of these companies. Next month, but they're going to come out with the, a video, and you're like, my whole portfolio has changed. You it's know? all about that balance, growth. though. Yeah. You know, it's all about that balance, and I'm happy to have some of those. But starting out, my portfolio was all those, and that's not good. Um, for someone in my, sh- in my shoes. Um, so anyway, I think when you first start dividend investing, you lean more towards, towards those, those type of companies. But as I've kind of gone down this road a little bit longer, it's changed to where now, instead of seeking out those type of companies with an X percent yield and an X year dividend growth history, um, now dividend investing just means buying stocks that pay a dividend. That's in the same way that I, growing sales and growing earnings is a must have for me now. So is like the presence of a dividend, but it can fall anywhere on that spectrum. And the point is you have to look at it holistically. You have to look at the entire thing and not just the, the dividend stats. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now. 
And like I said, moving forward, I think that's leaning me to to kind of taking a similar approach as you. But I don't want to sell out of the ones that I have already that kind of deviate from that because they've been great investments. Altria Group has been a – it's been one of my better investments, interestingly. Say, so has Main Street Capital Corporation and Blue Owl Capital Corporation. Those Those have been winners even though they're not – you know, your typical dividend growth stock. Um, so I think I think they serve an important purpose in my portfolio that I'm in the same way that Procter & Gamble and J&J do that I'm not really ready to let go of. But moving forward, I don't know that I need more of them because I'm, I, I already have that box checked. Sorry for the tangent, but I've been thinking a lot about that lately and that's that's the conclusion I'm coming to. No, I mean, it's good. It's the full scope. It's, it's interesting to hear it, like the evolution of a dividend investor or an investor in that standpoint. But like, you know, I had a comment on, on one of my videos not too long ago, but someone had commented like, oh, wow, it's it's nice to finally see Ari's coming around to a uh, total return. It's like, no, I was always interested in total return, but there's, there is a special like affinity towards the dividend, the dividend, you know, yield. And like, that's why I got started and, and it helped me invest. And I'm still only attracted to dividend stocks like that. That's a prerequisite and even to make it onto yes. my watch list. But at the end of the day, it's like I, I still run with this. It's like it's all about your scoreboard. Are you up? Then amazing. Are you down? Then, then readjust. But if you're up, you're up. Can you do better? Sure. You can always do better. But I think it's it's almost harsh language when, when someone's like, oh, if someone's finally coming around to something you know it's like it's the evolution you know and i also think that it's just interesting that i think about this it's like to be on camera like i know me and you do this whole deal for the same reason which is like to show the journey to help other investors and i think you have to be so vulnerable to even do that like you're we're allowing people to openly critique our moves our thought processes our portfolios and so in that, yeah, you're going to get to see somebody's journey. And is it really, you know, I don't know. If it, like, I don't, I just, I didn't, I commented back, you know, of course, like, yeah, you know, total returns important. Uh, so too, for me, dividends are important, but I think it's like, it's harsh, right? When you're saying that, it's like, I'd love to, I would love to have seen his portfolio, you know, like whenever he was in the throes of figuring it all out. And, and to that extent, it's, it's also like, it's important to be on this journey and find yourself and, and openly think like we are every week thinking out loud, if you will, hmm. because this is the only way we get to these kind of awakenings for everybody. Like these yeah. people are on a journey with us, you know, and clearly, it's like, it's, you gotta... clearly it's deeper than just investing too. You know? Oh yeah. Like J and J was totally, I grew up on it. You know, it was like I grew up on my father coming back. And when I talked about the stock market with my father, it's like talking about J&J &J and how stable it is. Like I had a special connection to J&J. &J. Of course I want to. And by the way, it fared my father very, very well over the years. Now, could he have performed better if he threw it all into Apple? Certainly. But like mm -hmm. that, that just wasn't what happened. And so everything has a story. I think the story is more important than like, Especially because it's like, what, what, this is another thing I started talking a lot about. What are we doing? Like, what are we invest? What are we really investing for? Because I'm not investing. Is the money going to be great at, at the end of the day with total return and, and whatever? Yeah, of course. Am I looking to become a billionaire? Or, you know, no. I'm just looking to have enough money at some point to be able to continue to live my life as I'm actually currently living it and be quote unquote free. And I think that's another element is like, I don't think enough investors are asking themselves that question. What am I doing? What am I actually really investing for? Yeah, I think it's easy to lose sight of all these other reasons to invest or all these other measures of success beyond just beating the market when that's that's constantly being sho shoved down your throat, that that's the yardstick you need to hold yourself to. Um, but to your point, there are so many other ways to to benefit from this. I mean, it's great to to get those those market beating returns for sure, but man, even if you don't, and that's one of the beauties of this style of investing, like just 
don't want to say investing for dividends, but that's one of the the great things about buying dividend paying companies is that, man, you can still win even if you, um, even if you don't outperform the market all the time. You know, it, you, your wealth will still grow, your passive income, which is for a lot of us is really what what we're after that growing passive income, um, that will continue to go up, and that's just a win all in itself. But you also like as as we're kind of talking about now you just you learn so much about yourself and you learn so much about the world around you by doing this too and that's you know a lot of people will ask i know you've gotten these questions why do you why would you invest in individual companies when you can just and risk like underperforming the S&P 500 when you can just get the gold standard get the market beating returns why why put yourself through all of that that trouble and and take all the time to do that but yeah, gosh, man, you learn so much from doing this and, and it's fun. It's so much fun. You know what I'm saying? And it's very, it's, it's rewarding. And the things that you learn when you're uncovering all these, these companies and learning about them, you can apply to other areas of your life as well. There's so many, like they say, I just read this book, Investing the Last Liberal Art. It is such a multidisciplinary approach, like psychology, philosophy, sociology, Math, history, all these other subjects can can be applied. Physics, biology, all these things can be applied to investing, and so, and you won't be as motivated to learn about any of that stuff if you just buy the S and P, which is fine. Like if that's if you don't want to think about it, if this stuff doesn't interest you, that's a great way to go, and you should do that. But you know, there's a lot of other. Um, a lot of other benefits you get from taking a different approach that aren't related necessarily to just beating the S&P, I guess. Does that make sense? 100%. I, was, I had a conversation with someone the other week. We were talking about passive investing and active investing. And he brought up a really interesting point because he was basically saying there's really no such thing as a passive investor unless you are literally not looking at all at your investment you're just literally pass never looking at it just passively putting money in there into the s p and anybody that is at some point in the week or in the day opening up their app to see yeah. oh, where's the s p you're becoming active now you're active in this you're actively involved and it's like if you have that you know if you caught that bug that it is fun yeah. And it and it does I love how you shared that it does help you grow. Like I have learned so much about myself on my losses and critiquing myself mm -hmm. far more than I would have ever have learned just investing in the S and P. Sure. And like I, I don't I wouldn't I would I would make I would have my losses all over again, right? Just to get the lessons that I have now today. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And that's important too, you know, it's um you might have lost some money, but as as you and Russ would say as well, that's just the price of tuition, and it's worth it. Oh, yeah. It's totally worth it, you know. Um, actually, I was going to ask you too. How often do you check your portfolio? Are you every day? Are you multiple times a day? Where are you where are you at with that? Wow. <laughs> so it depends on the day. It depends, like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because I'm a big macro guy. I will check on like big days where I know macro like, events are happening. Okay, so today you're all over it. Like today, I was, I woke up, you know, I'm like, oh, I gotta look. Um, <laughs> immediately, it yeah. was like 4 a.m. and I'm like, you know, let me see futures. <laughs> but by the way, for anyone who's watching this later than it goes out, it's, it was election day today, and uh, but no, it was. I mean, it's fun. I, I it's cool to see like. What I like to watch is like what stocks are moving and when they're moving and why they, why they may be moving, right? So like it was interesting today, the Dow shot up over a thousand points, mm -hmm. over a thousand points for the Dow, mm -hmm. you know, on election day here. And the last time we had that was November, 2022. It was just interesting, like make these connections, to try to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that makes me check it almost every day. And I don't care whether it's up or down, you know, like. I, I want to usually I use the red days on certain stocks like check this out last week United Health as I've been you know, I, I made it I again I made a mistake right I should have I should have taken J&J &J, booted it from my portfolio taken all of the money that day and just whoosh, 
put it right into United Health. What did I do? I took, I booted J and J. I bought, I think, five grand worth of United Health, and then I was like, I'm going to dollar cost average back into the position. Then the election day happens, right? And and boom, look at United Health. It soared. Is it a missed opportunity or something I didn't know was going to happen, right? It's like you look at yeah. it both ways. Now I'm playing Monday morning quarterback. But whenever I see my stocks in the red, because I have so few of them in my portfolio now, I have 13 total holdings in there. Nice. I buy. Like I literally, like I'm aggressive. I'm aggressively buying. I have what I call my stocks in focus. Visa and United Health are going to hit over 100 shares in 2025. I will make it happen. That's awesome. Uh, where are you at with uh, Where are you at with Visa right now? If you don't mind me asking, how many shares are you up to? <sighs> I want to I want to make sure I have the correct uh, info with United Health. I'm only at uh, 10, 10 shares. Not like okay. again. I should have I should have taken all the money and just threw it right in. But yeah. United Health is actually like quote unquote. So I can't say it's expensive, so. right? It's just uh, when you look at it at four hundred and something dollars, like oh, it's a lot of money. It's, it's not really. Uh, so let's see. Just want to make sure it's all correct for you, man. <laughs> yeah, don't lie. To, don't lie to me, Ari. <laughs> Get the facts. <laughs> I think I'm up to about 24 or 25 shares right now. About uh, 23. Okay, so we're we're pretty neck and neck. Dude, we could we could do a race until 50. I mean, this dude, is... <laughs> I totally would. I've been um. I've been adding dollar cost averaging into clear secure ticker symbol Y O U um, for the last probably six weeks or so now. And I want to get that one to a hundred shares before I move on to anything else. But after that, I'm, I think I'd like to refocus back on visa for a little bit. Um, but you got all these fun names in your portfolio. <laughs> yeah. I don't have them. Like my fun names are like alphabet. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun name. You're coming yeah. out of like, you know, like I got Clearwater, you know, I got this slot machine play. I'm like, it is fun. It does make it more exciting, man. Tell me about this company. So Clear Secure, you'll you'll be familiar with this company, I, I think. So if you've been to the airport, you know, when you go through TSA, you're you're just getting in the line of security. Usually off to the side, there's those blue and white kiosks that will say clear. Um, and essentially what it is, it's identity verification. They're not just in airports, they're elsewhere, which I'll get to in a moment. But at the airport, you know, instead of waiting in the, the TSA line um, to go through security there, you can basically shortcut it through clear secure. It's a much shorter line. Um, they just do a quick biometric scan to verify your identity and they send you on your way. So long story short, it's a time saver at the airport, which is such a frustrating experience for so many people. Um, or it can be depending on the day for sure. So that's the type of service that Clear Secure offers. They're basically selling convenience. Um, but they're not just in the airport as well. They're also at sports arenas around the country. So like, for example, um, T-Mobile Arena here in Vegas, Allegiant Stadium, which is where the Raiders play. They also have Clear kiosks there. So if you're going to a game, you can basically, instead of once again waiting in the line to scan your ticket, you can just go through the Clear Secure line and, and get right in. Um, they're also making their way into doctor's offices and hospitals and, and the medical industry for the same thing. If you go to the, the doctor's office, you know, instead of filling out the, you go to urgent care or something, instead of filling out the forms with, with all of your information and then ha them having to look up your medical records and get them transferred over from your other doctor, that can all be attached to your clear, secure account. It can all be, all your data could be right there. Um, and so it's kind of becoming a thing to where they can really be used anywhere that that identity needs to be verified um, and then whatever data is attached to that whether it's a ticket or your medical records or driver's license or whatever that can all be verified just depending on what information they need um, another interesting place they're in they actually have a partnership with home depot and the ceo sits on the board at home depot so i mean that makes sense they have an in there but now with home depot to let's say you rent some equipment um, from Home Depot, you're running a table saw or something like that. You can, uh, they basically make you verify your identity with clear secure. So it's just another way to, it's just how they, they verify that you're you. Um, so that's the gist of the company. And they are, they came in on the market, I think back in 2021. So, um, only recently public, 
uh, and it was only recently that they actually became profitable. So this is kind of an interesting one for me because typically I'm I'm not buying companies that just became profitable. So this will be an interesting experience. But so far, man, the sales growth has been phenomenal. Um, the earnings growth went from negative to positive and very positive very quickly. And the free cash flow growth is just pure class, okay? And so, and there's no debt either, no outstanding debt on the balance sheet. So this company has all the makings to be a great dividend growth stock. Um, and so we'll see what happens with it. But um, yeah, that's that's the most recent addition. But what I was trying to get to is once I get to 100 shares of that, I'm gonna switch gears back to, to Visa. And these days, man, I don't know if you feel the same, but these days I just, I feel like the portfolio is getting, it's starting to feel very complete. Like there's not... I look around at like my investable universe and the stocks that I'm really interested in, and it's not a long list. Um, and so I am kind of getting to the point where after this clear, secure, there's not too many other companies out there that I feel like I'd like to to add. I feel like the portfolio is getting pretty close to where there's not many more additions that can be made, which actually is is a good kind of a good feeling. I know the feeling. I, I feel yeah. the same. Like I'm. They're actually like, I want, I have this goal, this desire to get my portfolio to like seven to 10 stocks, right? Wow. And I keep saying okay. it. It's so aggressive. This is Bill Ackman aggressive. Like mm -hmm. Bill Ackman or not, right? Like some investors have their their uh, thoughts about Ackman. I, I happen to like him and I think he's an aggressive investor and I like, I like it, right? I like, just like the style. And so I'm after this seven to 10. And I don't know if it's just because Bill Ackman said it. And I'm like, yes, you know? But for me, I, I just realized when I double down on these positions, I've seen the growth from it. I like, yes, it does get more volatile sometimes for sure. But again, I'm not checking it every day to look at, you know, my, my returns because I'm retiring tomorrow and need the money. So it doesn't really matter for me. But I'm yeah. looking at my portfolio and I'm saying like, I'm, I feel good. Like I, I, there's, a, there's one other stock I actually really would like. I'm like, I got, I'm going to break the news. I've been thinking about, which for me, it's, it's really dangerous to think about this, but uh, I'm going to officially share it now. I have been thinking about chucking, booting, getting rid of, ready for this? Realty income. Wow. That's a big <laughs> statement, but um, I would imagine for the same that? reasons as, I would imagine it's for the same reasons as Johnson & Johnson, right? Yep. So I, I understand that. I totally get that. I for me and that one falls more pick. in the that one falls more in the stalwart category than than anything. So I I I get that, man. I think that's in alignment with the direction that you're trying to go. So it makes sense. But yeah, I mean, do you want to share what the replacement is? Yes. I'm curious about <laughs> this one. It's going to be something growthy. Maybe I mean, most investors would say agree realty, but I think you're you're about to throw a wrench in that. What what do we got here? Oh yeah. I'm okay. getting out of real estate. Okay. I'm going with, ready for this? This is my thoughts. I'm a little nervous to say it, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to need a drum roll for this one. <laughs> Waste management. Okay. That's a good choice. What do you What do you think? What do you think? Honest oh, thoughts. Oh, dude. You could yeah, tear you me a new one if you <laughs> Totally if you think different. No, absolutely not. Totally different dividend profile, obviously. But other, dude, come on. I mean, when you think about it, you know, you can think of a company like Apple and you can think, I can see how that at some point could be disrupted. When you think about like, I don't know, you think about what a, McDonald's, it's like, okay, well, maybe people stop liking McDonald's someday. Maybe, um, you know, Altria Group or Philip Morris, you can see how someday maybe those businesses wouldn't be so relevant. Garbage? <laughs> Come on, like... What can come in and disrupt how garbage is being handled? I, I, I've thought about this for a long time and I can't come up with anything. Maybe I'm just like that thick in the head, but I can't think of what would disrupt a company like Waste Management. And so, yeah, if you're looking for another business that's just like definitely resilient to change, I don't think you could have picked a better one. Resilient to change and super growth oriented. Mm -hmm. Because of the resiliency, right? Like I think it's yeah. beautiful, and I growth in multiple fronts, growth organically, and also growth by acquisition. Yep. Now the other interesting take on this 
is what they're currently doing or plans to continue to, you know, join this green revolution, if you will. And like, so in the next five to 10 years, the plan is not to handle trash like we're handling it right now, right? So I'm, I'm like super interested on this development. Now a huge investor in, in uh, waste management is Bill Gates. And he's also very much into the, right, the future and, and the green future. And I think it's really important. I think it's an important issue that we all have to think about. And if you just think about the, tra the amount of trash, I mean, just think about the amount of trash you throw out per day. Oh, yeah. Right? And then the millions and millions of people every single day. Mm -hmm. I think we, have, we need new solutions for trash, but trash will never go away. Well, yeah, people are always going to have trash, and there's, there's the way to collect it is I mean, someone's going to need to collect it, someone's going to need to dispose of it. And it's going to be waste management, it's going to be republic services. So know, say, that's could, the other thing. There's only two companies out there doing this deal, really. Yeah. Yeah, here in Vegas, um, Republic Services does our trash, and that one—that's one of the few that's that's on my watch list. Still in the investable universe for the the same exact reasons. It's just, just buy it and forget about it, really. I think I mean, I've been think I've been mulling this one over like I was mulling over J and J. Yeah, and and there was a a moment in time like two weeks ago where all my realty income was, you know, in the green, and I was like, mm. you know. Maybe today's the day, and I, so, I didn't do it. Oh, because okay. I I was like, you know, the monthly dividend. Again, it's it's that love affair, right? It's like, because I like to get dividend paychecks, and I like it comes in on a monthly basis. Yeah. And then I'm like, dude, like, again, go back to what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, man, it's um, I get it. It's it's a decision that will certainly. I mean, you'll be fine with realty income, but. Yeah, it's a decision that you think will be better off. It's a sacrifice of income today for the betterment of tomorrow is what it is. I think is how you're thinking about it. It's going to And it's hard that's hard to swallow. If I'm if I'm really being honest cuz I got really real with myself about this one too and I was like, you know, I like every month when I do the portfolio update and I'm yeah. like I know it's going to come out at a stronger high number because really income is going to give me that monthly cash flow, right? And I'm like but why are you doing this? Is it yeah. for the investors to watch that I got a higher dividend, you know, payout? Yeah, it's or tough, it man. It's um, you're doing you. It's it's an interesting thinking about all this stuff and and dwindling down your portfolio or swapping out like that. It's it's interesting to think about when I think about it for my own portfolio. I think, well, man, shoot. For me, like all roads would just lead to Visa, so it's like, why wouldn't I just? I think that's the gold standard. Why wouldn't I just go all in on that one company? And, um, but you know, you still got to have some, you know, there's more than one interesting company out, out there, I guess is what I, what the, the end thought there is. But it's interesting to think about all this portfolio construction. There's so many different ways to do it. And it's interesting still to think about all the people out there who have 50, 60, 100 different companies and, not like this is not like criticizing at all, but I just would have such a hard time doing that. So I'm having a hard time at, at 13 holdings. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm being honest. Yeah. No, seven, six or seven will feel good or eight or whatever, whatever that number ends up being. D single digits, it'll be good. And you know, you know, you know what you're doing, you know what to look for. And um, you won't put yourself in a position to where any like doing that is going to completely take you out of the game. And also you still have such exposure to ETFs as well. So you do have that safety net as well, which definitely, unless I'm mistaken, I think you still do. Um, 50%. So that, yeah. I mean, so I, like, that's where I feel like I can't lose. Like yeah. I really, that's the, that was the whole point of my, you know, foundational layer. And I did it with the S and P. So VU is the first layer. And then on top of VU is VGT. So I'm getting all the okay. tech. Yeah. And only then do I start to add on individual stocks. Like that that's what gives me the confidence, I think, to sit where I sit today. Yeah. That's that's the right way to go about it for sure. Um and that same approach, man, is what we would probably tell if there was a brand new investor asking us, Hey, what should I do? Like, how should I build my portfolio? Something like that is probably what you would tell them to do. Pick a couple ETS, make that 
you know, the bulk of your portfolio. And then, you know, you can sprinkle in some individual companies on top of that as well, but you don't need to go too crazy. You don't need 50 or 60 different companies. If you have all those ETFs, just pick a few that, that you understand and think are going to do good. And, and, um, you know, that's, that's going to be a pretty well-balanced portfolio. So I dig that, man. I think, uh, I think that's a good way to go. So what, so, okay. Realty income, Johnson and Johnson got the boot. You still have quite a handful more to go. Are there any other contenders that you're looking at right now as potential ones that you'd let go of? And sometimes they don't come immediately. Like sometimes those, uh, clearly those thoughts only come with time. So maybe you don't know yet, but are there any others that you're looking at as potentially, at potentially getting rid of? There, there are, there's, there's Coca-Cola that's in there. Okay. Like it, it's in there. It's like the original. It's the OG. Yeah. It was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a dividend investor. I again invest in Coca Cola. You know. But how could um, you betray Warren Buffett, Ari? I mean, <laughs> that's I can't get rid of it. I, yeah. I'm like my finger's been on the the trigger button of sell for some of these yeah. stocks. McDonald's, like some of them, I I just I have in there, and I, I that's what makes it. I think when you have you know fifty to sixty holdings, and you say, okay, I'm going to start to to trim down it's easy mm -hmm. and now it's hard like i'm trying to think about how bill ackman sits in his office and he's like yes yeah, seven to ten like it's hard i'm at 13 and i'm like i, I don't want to get rid of mcdonald's yeah but i have this goal so does mcdonald's really make the cut does coca-cola really make the cut I guess the you know good thing I mean? is, like, that's, it's hard. yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. I I sold out of Coca-Cola earlier this year to put into, I think, Visa or Vici. You actually. sold Coca-Cola. Yeah, I, so, I sold Coca-Cola. It, it became a pretty like... I might do it now. <laughs> <laughs> you, sometimes you just got to rip the Band-Aid off. And it, it's a tough one, man. It, it is because you think you, you almost kind of, and it's so not the case, but you almost feel like you're betraying Buffett by getting rid of Coca-Cola, but Buffett owns it. So you should own it too. And it's like um, you get a letter in the mail from Buffett. He's like, I, I saw what you did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it felt good. It felt good to get into something that, um, that is going to, I think, deliver higher total returns, higher income and total returns. And you know, if you, if you feel the same, if you, if you can look at those positions and think that you'll feel the same afterwards, then it's a good sign. It's probably a, a sign to let it go, but it's tough. And you know, if you want to ease into it, just sell, sell half of the position in the same way that you can dollar cost average into things. You can, you know, slowly sell your way out of them piece by piece too. And maybe that kind of takes the edge off a little bit. Yeah. I look, that's what happened with J and J. I sat on that for two weeks. Like I, I didn't even like, I was not sleeping right. That's how like <laughs> wow. I was, I was yeah. really invested in this. Like I woke up in the morning and I would check Jane, just J and J mm -hmm. like psychotically, you know? And I'm like, I'm going to sell it today, you know? And then <laughs> I would get to the, the, the moment and I'm like, I'm not going to sell it today. That's stupid. What am I doing? It's J and J. And yeah. then I go to the dog park and my dog's like doing, you know, doing her thing. And I'm sitting there looking at the stock and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. Right? Like yeah. this was a back and forth thing for two weeks. And finally, when I did rip the bandaid, like it felt good. And I was like, great. I made a decision into United Health. I go. I think you're right, man. I think I should just, by next week, I might just get rid of Coca-Cola. It's sad to say. What do you think you would put that into if you did? Would you go into more waste management or would you use that for waste management or UNH or what do you think you do with no, that? No, I don't, I, I don't think I'm ready for waste management like to add in yet. Okay. And I also think like right now, I, I, I don't know where it is right now in this moment, but I think waste management, it was at an all-time high like a couple of days ago, last week maybe. I know it came down, but I have this thing, right? So I'm, I call it stocks in focus, like my stocks in focus for 2024, my stocks in focus for 2025. So entering now this year, United Health and Visa are on the top of that list for stocks in focus to get to 100 shares. And I ask myself, if I get rid of any other position, am I going to add the waste management or do I just want to stay focused on United Health and, and Visa? Because those are the diamonds in the rough for me. I like that, man. That's a very disciplined approach to capital allocation. And that's tough. That is so tough. <laughs> that's, that's really tough. I, I watched 
United Health a month ago or maybe two months ago, and I actually made it in one of the stock idea videos that I do. Waste management was there. And I was like, it's a buy, buy it. It's going to go back up. Of course it did, like a couple days from then. Mm -hmm. And um, it only came down. I think it was earnings or whatever it was, but it came down. And, and uh, I, I thought that moment, I was like, well, it's on the list for other people. Like maybe I'll buy it today. And then I, I couldn't I, because I'm like, I got to just stay focused, focus, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I, yeah, I think that's a good move because if you were to if you were to do waste management now, that would obviously come at the expense of of your stocks and focus. And in hindsight, like you would look back and think, man, I should have I should have done that. I should have waited. I should have stayed true to the plan and and continued focusing on on those two. Um, so that's tough, man. Especially I during like to times, like ninja kick out certain stocks and then throw that money in, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Put it back like to work. J was out. United Health was in, right? And take that money and out reallocate it. And yeah, I just if I get rid of Realty Income like tomorrow, that's my thought process. I'm like, where's that money going to go? Is it mm -hmm. going to go to Visa and United Health, or can I can I add in? You know, it's it's a game of that thinking. So, do you think those two will be your stocks in focus until you get those 100 shares? Um, or what is, I mean, when do you feel okay to transition? That's such a, that's such a great question, man. I, and it's like, tough, again, man. It's like, I know it's a tough answer too. <laughs> if I see, a, if I see, you know, I guess it's such an interesting time too because I feel like, I, I don't know, but I think we might head into like a bullish run. Mm. Like everybody's expecting the, the stock market to just skyrocket. Mm. And on top of that, I feel like interest rates will work their way down. Is that bullish activity, right? Like, so I don't, I, you want a dollar cost average in now, right? But then don't miss the opportunities on the stocks and focus. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Got to stop. Man, smoking, I'm, man. It's, it's bad. Got to cut out those cigars. cigars. <laughs> Victory cigars. I don't know, man. I just, I'm like, I'm restless, I'm irritable, and I'm discontent about growing these stocks in focus, <laughs> kicking out other stocks. It's, yeah. It's hard to be patient. I, th I honestly, I, if I make it, I'm a man of my word, right? So if I make a commitment right now to you that I'm going to do something, then I, I'm going to execute on it because I just, I'm like, I just told Ryan Williams that I'm going to go do this. <laughs> Can't well, I don't want you it. to do that, man. The only commitment that I want you to make is to do what you think is best. That's all you can do. So if you make any commitment today, just let it be that. I think, look, my, definitely by, by in 2025, both of those positions will hit 100 shares. Um, cool. That's a firm commitment. When it comes to Realty Income, getting the boot or Coca-Cola, I think you may have just inspired me to kick out Coca-Cola <laughs> rather soon. Okay. That's like a competition thing at this point. I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you kicked out Coca-Cola? You did it? <laughs> well, watch you what know? I can do. I'll kick it out yeah. twice as fast, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think it'll it'll feel good to do it. I don't know. And, and obviously, you know, the interesting thing too about all of these companies that we've talked about, they're not bad. Like it's nothing against those companies. It's just you you think that there's better – probably better uses for them or, or there are other companies that you're that you're more interested in. And I think you have to follow that. Um, and at the end of the day, building an, a, a portfolio of individual stocks really is, it's you're building a collection. You are a collector. And it's actually no different than like, than watch collecting. You know, certain watches speak to you and after you have to have them once you find whatever that is, whether it's a dive watch or, you know, a, a chronograph or or what have you you have to have you have to have it but then sometimes like after a period of owning it it loses its luster and it sits in the in the drawer for a period of time cuz you you just like wearing all your other watches so much more and then you start to look at that watch as the one that you don't wear is taking up just taking up space it's just there and someone else would get a lot more use out of it than I currently am so you know, it's uh, sometimes you have to let those ones go. But long story short, it is, it is a collect. It is a, you are a collector if you are an individual stock investor, and 
in a sense, your portfolio and the companies you own is is an extension of the way that you look at the world and what you think is is going to happen and the direction it'll go down. And obviously, that changes over time, right? As you grow and evolve and learn more, and as just the events around the world unfold, it's a complex, dynamic system. So, it sounds like you're just uh, you know you kind of have to respond to that as you see fit. Oh yeah, I, I you know it's interesting to even talk about you know the comparison between watches and uh, and just being a collector and, and stocks and. Because you do, you get this sentimental value there. Sure. You've 100%. had the position. You have the watch. It was your first watch, maybe. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, but somebody else, like you said, it could just benefit somebody else. So it will be better off in someone else's portfolio. Yes. Yes. Interesting, man. It's fun, though. This is like the, the hard part about investing, but this is also there's also the fun part about it. And people, some people listening might... I think no, that's not fun. That's like I'm getting a headache just listening to you like go back and forth on that. But it's fun thinking about this stuff. It's definitely a mind trip. But uh it's a fun game to play and it's it, it's a rewarding game to play. And as we've talked about like you know the wins and the benefits you get from it are they stretch beyond just you know the dollar amount. So it's cool. It's a cool hobby to have. I'd love to know if if Warren Buffett would sell any of his like I know he's a buy and never sell guy, but like based on everything we're saying now, would he just laugh at us? You know, like what, what do you think? I don't know. That's a really good question. Like, let's think back to Coca Cola because it's like comparing Coca Cola to Apple. Why? I guess why would he continue to hold on to Coca-Cola if he thought Apple was going to deliver better returns or was going to be a growthier business? I don't know. I guess his I guess it just goes back to being a business owner instead of a stock picker. I don't know. You know, he still has an appreciation for the underlying business and under, understands why it customers still do as well and that hasn't changed and it's still spitting out cash flow that's growing every year and it's been good to me so why would i sell it i don't know that's a really tough question what do you think i feel like you would laugh at us <laughs> probably probably thinking too <laughs> i'm like about sitting it. here and i'm like man warren buffett would laugh at me you know i because if you think about it if you buy in at a good price been delivering why do you really have to sell but also we don't have the capital that he has i guess that's another interesting take right it's like when you're only working with limited amounts of capital you can't make the moves he's making you can't sit on certain like there's no influx of capital like there is but that's also a finite amount that we have to spend Right, and budget accordingly. Yeah. He has the opposite problem, obviously, where he has too much cash, like so much cash that he doesn't know how to get rid of it fast enough. Which is a, yeah, I mean, that's, I would take that problem off his hands in a heartbeat. (laughs) Um, But maybe that's part of it too. Maybe there's just, maybe, why would I sell Coca Cola if I have all this other money that I don't know what to do with? mounds of it someday man you know we've still got he's got about (laughs) i think 40 years or no 60 years on us at this point so you know maybe we'll have that problem someday too look the book you you uh had shared with me before the snowball yeah which by the way i'm I'm only halfway through that thing it's such a brick of a book yeah um it's like for those watching and listening it's probably like 700 something pages it's a brick. If it's a literally a weighted brick. But you could assault someone with it for sure. <laughs> it's huge. I actually <laughs> I thought the book was going to be about more about his approach to investing than it is his life. Now it is a, it's more of his life. Yeah. But it still gives you an interesting outlook on his investment style and how he thinks. But mm-hmm. um 
No, look, I think through that book, you you can really get an understanding of how he would look at something, and I think we're spot on. It's like he's he's in a totally different position, sitting on mountains of cash. No need. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, we don't have enough cash, I suppose. We we don't have we, – we deploy cash more quickly than we have to – save i i know that's not the right phrase but we don't have enough enough money you know he has too much and so in that instance it's easier i think to sell out of positions to unlock capital because you need it to put elsewhere so yeah that's probably the difference um and that's maybe why it for someone in your shoes and mine it makes sense to get out of coca-cola and go somewhere else so going back to j and j though you know Interestingly, that has been that has been one that I've been thinking about letting go of too. And I should have said this earlier, but you know, you were talking about it more. Russ is getting ready to sell out of it as well. And these last handful of weeks, I've been looking at my position, especially as I have looked around the rest of my portfolio at uh, at other positions that I've held for so long. J and J was like one of my first investments, <clears throat> and it's break even on a total return basis right now, including. Um, you know, including dividends, it's pretty break even after almost five years of investing. And so that the return on investment there has been, you know, pretty poor compared to a lot of other positions. And that's going back to like the original question, like sell out of that for more, you know, higher growth stuff, what would you do? That's where I get torn because I look at the, the return and I'm like, it's pretty much stayed the same. But then that, you know, J&J is also like saving my butt in during times where the market's been pretty bad defense versus offense. And so that's, that's a tough thing to grapple with. Um, and I'm sorry, I know I totally went back to that conversation out of nowhere. So it's interesting. No, it's, look, I, I, that's, that's the reality that made me finally sell it. Cause the math, do the math, your break, even your break, even. What do you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? I would say in five years, if you were at least like that, when I looked at J and J for me, it was also just about break even. Mm -hmm. Did it make any sense? Yeah. I'm going to give it some more thought. Um, like I said, I still do like having some of those sleep well at night, defensive stocks in my portfolio, but I still have Procter and Gamble, you know, realty income is that as well. I think Altria could be that too. You know, I've got a handful of other companies that that do play that role. So maybe I could get, uh, you know, I could get rid of a cornerback and and add a add a running back or something like that. But um, I, I was going to ask you too, going back to the snowball. Sorry, I'm all, jumping all over the place. Are you are you reading anything else right now? Have you been pretty consistent with reading, or you just kind of you know, there's so much going on in my life right now at this particular yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. Um, one of like, I mean, one of the big things, this is also new news, um, uh, that I'm going to disclose for anybody who's gotten this far. Uh, but there's an ETF firm that I'm about to partner with. Oh, and so I've been doing some work there. That's, that's under the wraps more, cool. more to be uh, disclosed soon. Nice. Um, but there's that. And so I'm like, okay, I got this and I, I was, I'm such a voracious reader, right? And like, I was reading almost uh, two books, three books a month in wow. 2024. I was on good pace. Then all of a sudden I started reading a book. Uh, the, the end of the world is just the beginning. And I, I just finished that one and started reading the Warren Buffett, uh, the snowball. And it's so dense. Hmm. And I'm like, got all these other things on my plate. I got caught up in life. I'm midway yeah. through. And I'm really bummed about it because it's like a personal thing for me. I'm like, at least a book a month. Man, you've been on this snowball for two months now. What are you doing? You know, well, that's how I you, think. I'm like, what, what if you switched it instead of a book a month? What if you did 20 minutes a day? I should do that. That's kind of how I try and approach it because it's, it's, it can, you know, yeah, your, your days can fill up pretty quickly and things happen, but 20 minutes is pretty doable. It's doable. It's doable right now after this call. I can literally right, like wind down with another cup of tea and just read 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, I uh, this it's is a game the value of these chats, man. <laughs> no, it really is, man. It, you know, we came into this guy's, 
no plan whatsoever, no direction for this conversation. Um, just basically two amigos catching up. And Ari, Ari and I, I feel like we think the same way about a lot of things. And we don't, we will text and we'll send voice messages back and forth pretty regularly, but very rarely do we have the chance to do what we're doing now. And it's helpful being able to flesh out these thoughts and be able to, you know, bounce them off each other. And uh, so it's fun. It's, it's really, it's really cool being able to do this. I was going to say, man, we should, so we'll, we'll wrap it up on the hour here. But before I, before we close out, I want to say, I feel like what we should do is whoever's made it this far, drop a comment, let us know what you think. Also, we'll add this to the agenda. If successful here, give us some questions. What do you want us to answer? Yeah. What do you, what do you have in store for your portfolios? How do you want us to look at your portfolios? Bring some questions to us. I think we can incorporate kind of everybody in this uh, community. Yeah, and I hope this was helpful for, for some of you guys watching. Obviously, we like spilled our guts here in this conversation. Um, and whether our take and our thought process on some of these things is right or wrong, only time will tell. And I'm sure it'll change a year from now some of this stuff than, than where we're at today. But I hope, I hope you know, this helps some of you guys think through some of this stuff as well. Because it's a lot. It can be a lot. But yeah, man, this is this was fun. And I want to thank you for, for having me on your channel. Um, and thank you for course, taking man. the time how, how to, I not? to just chat with me, man. This is this is always fun. I'll, I will do it anytime. Like I said, we're, we're waiting for those comments. We'll see what comes in. Yeah. And if it's great, I mean, we'll, we'll just do we, we should do this like monthly, at least weekly, if yeah. we can. Heck yeah, but like man. just a literal open chat. This is going to be totally unedited. I'm not doing any editing here. Yeah. So you're going to also get my cough midway through, smoker cough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, totally unedited, just a chat, and uh, we'll see. We'll we'll see where it goes. We'll, what comes in? Sure. Absolutely, man. So awesome. anyway, thank you again, everyone who's watching. Thank you guys so much for for spending this time with us too. It means a lot that you guys uh, support both of us more. You know, we're on Ari's channel, so. Support him and listen to both of our gibbers. Support Ryan. Really support Ryan. 70,000 hey. subscribers. <laughs> well, you're catching up <laughs> quick, man. You're 35, 36 now, I think. Um, we'll which see, is, man. I, which I'm is playing just, a big game of catch up. <laughs> no, you're, well, you're doing it quite well, so keep it up. And yeah, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Ari.